In the 1950, one of the oldest gangs in Pilsen, hanging out close to Taylor Street, AKA Peanut Park. They would make Pilsen their home and motherland for the next 70 years. Yes, you guys have been waiting for this one and asking. We're talking about the almighty Ambrose. Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise, like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. <laughs> Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. God out, should have seen the look on their faces. All jealous cause your boy second. Hey, what's up? My name's JC. I am Wrong the Strong. It's another episode of Gang Life in Chicago. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss nothing. And if you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, Shy Town's finest, you already know. Subanse la suburban. Let's take a ride into Pilsen City. Yeah. You know, uh, I wanted, it took me a little bit of time to get this one out just because I wanted to really, really look into everything. You know, uh, Ambrose has a lot, a lot of history, a lot. Just, they go way back. I mean, started as, as a club, uh, baseball, they played baseball. Like, and this is like what I mean about all these gangs that, you know, involved into gangs in Chicago, that they started as social clubs and then involved into gangs. And I'll be sharing a little bit more of that history, how that started in Chicago and everything. It just takes a lot of, you know, research. I could only share my, my story and, and what connected me to all this stuff in, in short periods, but I also have to do the research to actually get it right, you know? So it takes time and, and effort. But like I said, the Ambrose have a lot of history, a lot, a lot of history since like the 1950s. It has shown that they were a social club and baseball team, and they used to slug it out. Uh, their earliest members were Italians and Mex Mexican Americans in the Pilsen area and you know um when the first when I first actually as a kid ran into Ambrose was in 1989 when I started going to Tanti school on 59th and there was an Ambro there that later on became a high ranking member for them Peter that I was I think I was in sixth no seventh grade he was an eighth grader and uh actually that year, the Land Kings pull a hit on him, and draw. I'll never forget that day because I was walking out of the school. I went into the alley where my grandma, my grandparents lived, because they lived right on 59th. And I actually seen the car pull up, and it was three Land King members. One was the driver, and the other two, and I think they were from Crown Town. Well, they were talking, so I went back just to see what was going on. And yeah, they were, you know, uh, that's the day that they tried to shot, shoot Peter. They shot him through the arm and came out and they shot another kid in the leg. But, you know, Ambrose had already established themselves on that side of town pretty much. I used to go to the Boys and Girls Club on 63rd, 63rd Street. I want to say it was, it was Holman. It was home in the 63rd where there was a girls and boys club that I used to go to and I used to see them out there all the time. All down 63rd. But like I said, their home and motherland for the next 70 years, Pilsen, the almighty Ambrose. The older members actually established businesses in that area and this is what you know local big gangs do in Chicago they open up businesses and that pretty much sets up the roots for them to be there for years uh, the Ambrose joined the folks nation in like the 80s but something happened around I want to say the 70s where a cop a cop was shot by one of the Ambrose but it was said that the cop was pretending to be 
a Rasa gang member and was, sh you know, shouting out Rasa, and one of the Ambrose, you know, took care of business. That made a strong, strong law enforcement present in that area, so they had to, like, move. It, it made it almost impossible for them to hang out on 18th Street and Troop. Their colors are black. I say baby blue. Some people say light blue. I think baby blue is it's closer to their colors. Their symbols are the spear and A, a knight helmet. I'm not going to say the knight, the knight helmet is actually pretty fucking badass. And they're very active to this day. Remember, we talk about gangs that are active and not active. Pretty much gangs that have went instinct with time and wars and, you know, persecution when the cops pretty much eliminate them. In the 1960s, it was the time for the Ambrose to start taking over smaller clubs. And this is what I mean. You see it in Chicago all the time. They're called franchises. You'll see them take over smaller gangs and pretty much grow in size. This is what made the Land King so big. This is what made other gangs so big. So pretty much it's the same gang, just in different areas. Just like the Ambrose have a section in Pilsen, Wildside. 63rd, 70 something, the, the Wild Hundreds. I mean, it's all the same gang. They're just in different areas of Chicago. The Ambrose built a strong presence on 21st and Pilsen, Wildside. And in the 1980s, opened up the turf in Marquette Park. But like always, the feds, law enforcement, when a gang is getting too powerful, they launch big operations. And that's when came, when the Operation Blue Water came into play. And it sent a lot of their members to prison for a long time. If you guys don't know, actually Ambrose were actually one of the main, main distributors of PCP. If you're from Chicago, you already know. Wiki Water is very, very bad. But very, very highly used amongst gang members and it's actually very very um, looked down upon with a lot of organizations you actually get beat up for using that shit I had a lot of my friends that you know we use that stuff and get beat up over and over again they would still keep using it I, n I tried it once I never liked it it just wasn't it wasn't for me it takes you completely out of your comfort zone you don't know what's going on a lot of members have actually been killed like that because they're they're on PCP wiki water and they'll get into an enemy's car and they'll drive off with them and kill them and you know it's it's just a really bad problem so the law enforcement did a big operation on them blue water and they sent a lot of guys to prison like i said guys we share these you know gang gang life episodes we share these stories to give you a brief history of what chicago is and how they started we will be sharing a little bit more of why the territories were what they were uh the sweaters the graffiti everything because chicago has a unique unique style in gang manging gang culture I mean graffiti, I mean you name it, even music from way back in the day from like classic to you know uh, freestyle, all, all Little Susie, all, all that stuff you know I had a very very unique style that I want to share and, and I don't want the younger generation to forget where they came from you know it's history it's chicago a lot of the neighborhoods have changed throughout the years you know pilsen now is very very different pilsen was known as like that gang banging city 18th street you know they called it you know and there was a gang on literally on every corner now it's completely changed and is a like one of the top areas to visit in chicago because there's so much history culture food music all this stuff going on that it's one of my it's on my top list to go visit when i go to chicago in february so you know it's 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 history it's not glorifying gangs it's not glorifying none of this stuff it's just showing history because remember a lot of these organizations started as social clubs to protect their neighborhoods if you go back in history, you could see it in black and white paper. They actually used to send social workers to meet 
with these people that ran these organizations because they were cleaning up the neighborhood, they were cleaning up graffiti. There was there was a lot of racial, you know, tension in Chicago at one point when a lot of immigration was coming in. The Puerto Ricans were coming in, the Mexicans were coming in, Italians, Irish, you know, they they had the white flight where all the white people moved out to different areas and then Cicero Berwin changed. It is a, a, a melting pot. Remember, Chicago has been a hub for many, many things, not just drugs, not just gangs, not, not, it's been a hub for culture, culture, people, life. My name's JC, I am Ron Strong. Don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, you only have one life to live, but if you live it right, outside of prison, sober, not gang banging, you're gonna live a good life, man. I love you guys, Ron Strong.